Right, hi everyone. We're going to get started. My name's Jason. I'm one of the directors of UES Education. I'm not particularly involved in this, uh, this presentation today. I'm actually here just to um, get the webinar started and hand over to my colleague Martine, one of the college counsellors at, at UES, um, and she is going to introduce Olivia from Savannah College of Art and Design, and they're going to talk about creative applications. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it straight over to Martine. Thanks, Martine. Thanks, Jason. Hi, everybody. My name is Martine. Uh, as Jason said, I'm a college counselor with UES Education. Um, I'm uh, in schools uh, as well. I'm the counselor at Weatherby Senior School and at Charter House in Surrey. And so enough about me, let's get straight into this webinar. So we are um, really lucky to have uh, Olivia Anderson here from SCAD, so yeah, Savannah College of Art and Design, uh, who's going to uh, talk to us a little bit more about SCAD, of course, but about creative applications in general. And uh, she's got a few tips for us about uh, portfolio creation. And so um, without further ado, Olivia, I'll pass it over to you. Great, thanks, Martine. I'm so excited to be here today. Um, as mentioned, my name is Olivia Anderson, and I'm the Associate Director of Admission for Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. I work with students who are both prospects looking at the possibility of pursuing a creative career, as well as applicants once they begin their journey here at SCAD. And I've been with SCAD for about three years now. It's been a wonderful experience, and I really enjoy working with students who are interested in the creative industry. So to begin, uh, Martine, do you want me to provide a little bit of context as to who we are? Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. That would be great. Thanks. There, I know a couple of students uh, online who are particularly interested in SCAD as well. So it would be great if you could uh, do that. Okay, wonderful. Great. Uh, so SCAD, what is SCAD? SCAD stands for the Savannah College of Art and Design. We were founded in 1978, and for more than 40 years, we've grown to become one of the most leading and comprehensive art and design universities in the world. Um, we have about 15,000 students, and that's across all 50 US states and over 123 different countries. In fact, about 27% of SCAD's student body is international. It's something that we really value. Um, of course, diversity is always a good thing, but particularly in the creative world, you want to be in there encountering those around you with differing opinions, backgrounds, cultures. You never know where you might find your inspiration. Uh, now, SCAD has four different campuses. We have one in Savannah, Georgia. That is our flagship location where SCAD began, where we have over 80 historically preserved buildings located throughout the city. It's a really, really beautiful city with a lot of great architecture and great history. We also have a campus in Atlanta, Georgia. So if you would like the hustle bustle of being in a major city, then that is the campus for you. Um, it is a much smaller SCAD presence, but you are in the backyard of Fortune 500 companies. It's great access. Um, and we also have some other nearby universities. So it's great to just be a young person there. Uh, and then we have our study abroad location in Lacoste, France. Now that is in Southern France. Um, absolutely beautiful location. Uh, it's hard to beat, a really special experience um, with a lot of history. The buildings are over a thousand years old and it was a fantastic preservation project, kind of juxtaposed now with all of the leading technology you'll find inside the buildings. Um, and students can spend about 10 weeks there. And then we also have online. And you can access a SCAD education from anywhere in the world, whenever, wherever. And every single student who's accepted into SCAD is accepted into all four of those locations. So you can customize your experience as you see fit. Now, something to keep in mind is that we have over 40 majors to choose from. So there is so much diversity within the creative realm. Um, it's a really, really great opportunity to explore what even exists by going on our webpage and seeing what majors there are, what career paths there are, everything from painting, illustration, graphic design, to user experience design, fashion marketing and management, immersive reality. There are so many different ways for you to enter this world. 
Um, and students can also do majors and minors together. So if you have different interests, you can certainly pursue those. And if you want to have a complementary program as well, oftentimes, for example, our fashion students will pair that with textiles. That's a great way to have a very comprehensive degree. Now, one last important point about SCAD is that we are very career oriented. We want to make sure that our students are graduating not just with that diploma, but with also the experience and skills necessary to have a extremely successful career the minute that they graduate. Um, so we have programs developed to make sure that they are building those skill sets, um, such as communication. We have a program called SCAD AMP. It's about amplifying your voice. You wanna make sure that when it comes time to sit down for an interview, you have not only great work, but the ability to really present yourself and that work in a professional and engaging way. Um, you know, if you meet someone for a, a coffee or perhaps you bump into someone at the airport, do you have an elevator pitch ready? Are you ready to have a 20 minute conversation? What are you going to fit in there? Um, so those are some of the skills that we make sure that our students are able to cultivate while they're at SCAD. So that way they're able to enter the world as true leaders in their profession. That's fantastic. I think the elevator pitch is is definitely underrated sometimes because I Absolutely. feel like I feel like in in the UK we talk about how we got somewhere, so transport, the mm. weather, and then you know how we <laughs> got to that weather. <laughs> so good yes. to develop. Absolutely, and it's we have an incredible facilities dedicated to this program. One of which is a fake elevator, and you can put what floor you're going to, and it truly tests if you're ready to give that that pitch just like that, it's quite fun. Oh, perfect experiential uh, example there. Great, so um, I might, uh, and, and I love the, I must say, I've said this before, but I love, I love the idea of the French campus, you know, and just being able to spend a couple, you know, a couple, some time in the south of France painting like the Impressionists or exactly. you know, that light and the inspiration must be absolutely fantastic. Absolutely. It's great to get yourself out of your usual environment and kind of enter that different world. It's very secluded and it's great to be kind of connected more with nature and we visit historical sites and then the students actually spend a week in Paris. So you'll have that city experience too. To visit all of the great museums as well. Mm -hmm. oh, exactly. Wonderful. Brilliant. All right. Well, um, I will just remind uh, our attendees that if you have any questions, p uh, please post them in the Q&A. Um, I know that some students have sent me their uh, questions in advance, so I, I promise to get to those as well. Um, but um, yeah, Olivia, I think uh, you have a presentation for us to, to discuss some of the portfolio material would be perfect. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so I have kind of a brief introduction into creating a portfolio and some tips for that, and then we can go over any questions. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen just a second here. Um, I think I need permission to do so. Let me see if I can. <clears throat> oh, um, I think I need, oops, she's disappeared. Hopefully she'll reconnect soon. Um, Jason, if you're there. I might need a little bit of help so that Olivia can share her screen. What do you need? You should be able screen. to share your screen, Martine. Uh, no, so Olivia can share her screen. Okay. There we go. I think that this should work. Have me rejoin as a host. Great. Wonderful. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Let me set this up. Great. Can you see that okay? Yes. Wonderful. So how to create a portfolio and showcase your work in an effective manner. So one of the first tips that I will begin with is portfolio development. Starting early is really, really important. 
just like when you go to write an essay, you're going to need time to create those drafts, go back and edit, have an entire process ahead of you. So making sure that you give yourself enough time to do so is really important. Now, the nice part is if you are taking part in the UK system of GCSEs and A-levels and you decide to take an artistic class, that curriculum will lend itself well to making sure that you have plenty of time to develop your projects. But if you're doing this on your own, then I would suggest starting early. It also is really helpful to keep a sketchbook or a journal with you. You never really know when your ideas are going to pop up or when you see a scene that maybe you want to catch, cap capture. And that's always really great to have that um, just for yourself. Seeking feedback. This is also really valuable in this process. Um, you want to make sure that you're hearing from other people what they what they think of their work, of your work. Um, and keep in mind that a university portfolio committee is seeing your work for the very first time with no context. So it actually can be sometimes helpful to ask a friend who maybe hasn't seen your work before and see what their initial thoughts are and their impressions, if they have any questions, if maybe one piece stands out to them more than the other. Of course, you can always, always trust your gut and follow your instinct. But by seeking feedback of all different kinds from your counselor, from your teachers, from your parents, friends, you'll be able to glean the most important factors and also see if there are patterns in their feedback. The different types of portfolios. It's really, really important that you understand that each art and design university is going to have its own requirements and expectations. And it's really important that you understand those thoroughly. If you have any questions, go ahead and reach out to the university. They will be more than happy to answer your question and make sure that it's clear. At SCAD, we have a visual arts portfolio where students can submit anything from sculpture, photography, as well as paintings. Um, we also have a writing portfolio and that's going to be anything from five to 15 pages of any form of writing. It can be multiple pieces or one longer piece. You also can have a performance-based portfolio that's going to be for those looking to um, go into acting of some kind. Uh, you also can do singing or even a monologue. And then we have a time-based media, which basically just means film of some sort or a hybrid of the two. So these are specific at SCAD. Now, um, at SCAD, the portfolio is evaluated for scholarship. So it does not have to be specifically related what you would like to study at SCAT. Um, we realize that you might not in fact have work that is going to lend itself to a major of the business of beauty and fragrance, and that's okay. Go ahead and choose your best work right now, whatever it may be. Now, it can be really helpful to think of your portfolio as a visual interview. Making sure that you take time to edit it down. You wanna start with more pieces than you're going to use and then eventually whittle that down to your very best. You should be focusing on demonstrating your talent and your strengths. If you're really, really great at drawing with charcoal, then go ahead and submit pieces with charcoal. It's okay if you maybe don't have as much variety as long as you're really showcasing that talent. And then also consider the composition as a whole. Keeping in mind that you're submitting this on a virtual platform, we will actually be seeing all your pieces all at once on the screen before clicking into each one individually. So it can be really helpful to kind of take a step back and think about what that's going to look like all together. If you have the opportunity to lay everything out on the floor, I actually think that can be really helpful in this case, getting a little bit of a sense of what that reviewer is seeing online. Now, of course, these are just generally good tips to keep in mind in the artistic field, making sure that you're using strong values. When you go to upload an image, sometimes the color balance can be a little off, so it's completely acceptable for you to go back and edit that and make it an accurate representation of what the piece really shows. Making sure that you crop the images is really important. Um, the way that you're presenting it online, it should be as professional as possible. And you don't want to be taking any dis any time away from your piece itself. So make sure that there's not anything distracting from just your work.
making sure to fill the entire frame and using unusual angles is always uh, great techniques to really create those best pieces. And of course, keeping in mind, how exactly do you submit that portfolio? At SCAD, we use a platform called SlideRoom where you're going to be uploading, uploading the images. You will have the opportunity to write a little piece of context for the reviewer, um, including the size, the materials used, and any additional thoughts that you would like to include. And of course, any specific instructions as well. Now this right here is a image that helps with taking photographs of your work. You really wanna make sure that there are no distracting shadows. So taking a picture outside on a very sunny day, trying to have the light source right up above you would be very helpful. And if you can't do that, then having two light sources indoors will really often help with that artwork, creating that flat but bright lighting. So a couple things to avoid. Um, I mentioned before cropping is really key, making sure that we don't see any binder rings, smudges, anything that's not intentional, do not include. Um, something else to consider is cliches. So we have thousands and thousands and thousands of applications each year. Every single one of those students are submitting their portfolio. So you wanna make sure that your pieces are standing out. Um, I cannot tell you how many eyeballs that we've viewed at this point or nature photos that really don't have very much to say. Of course, there might be a piece with an eyeball or with nature that really stands out and that's fantastic. But I would just say, make sure that it really does and that it represents you as an artist. We are also not interested in any unfinished work. Now that can be different per university. So do keep that in mind. Some universities really wanna see your process. And while that's very valuable, we are much more interested in the completed final piece. And then of course, a great rule of thumb for any work that you are a part of, uh, no plagiarism. Make sure that you are citing any content or major influences. Just to give you a few sample pieces here, Every year we have a SCAD Challenge scholarship competition where students can submit their work. Uh, you can see here, this was a one of the winner for the 2D design award. Um, really, really fantastic piece. You can see that as a poster or even on a t-shirt, really gives you that summer feeling of great warm colors, but then the very different uh, square against the circle, uh, really great detail involved as well. This piece here received second place and it's just a very unique image. Um, great use of cropping where you kind of don't see some of the birds up above and um, it's a little bit uneasy feeling. Again, great detail. This is a fantastic photograph, really gives you that sense of summer. Um, and just look at the patterns in terms of those squares and of course the difference of the round um, uh, floaty that he's sitting in there as well and the yellow and the yellow. Great, great piece. So this right here is a great example of using nature as in a very unique manner. Um, the lighting of the blue light in the car in the front and then the red light in the back and then of course the person standing on top really creates this very interesting image. Um, and of course the capturing of stars is shows a lot of talent and a lot of um, of potential for this student who is most likely going to be studying photography. And I'll wrap up here with the 3D model. This is a great example of how you can submit work um, by taking pictures of it all around. So just because it's one piece, it doesn't mean you upload one image. You wanna make sure that your reviewers are able to see all the different angles of the piece if it's 3D and all of those um, details that you're including. It also is a great example of using a very specific background to make sure that you're only focusing on the work. Having it be black means that the only thing that we are looking at is Beowulf and all the details that is included in this piece. So I hope that this kind of helps kickstart the conversation of what, uh, what is a really valuable and showcasing your work portfolio. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, please include them. Great, thank you so much, Olivia. That's really interesting. Some of those, uh, some of those artworks are really incredible. Yeah, um, and, absolutely, and, and quite a quite a high level uh, as well. 
Um, so before we, uh, before I, I touch on some of the questions uh, from the Q and A, some of the things that I, I'd like to ask is, um, well, first of all, um, a, a, a little bit off uh, off here, but the eyeballs, where where <laughs> where does that trend come from? I don't know. I think. I think eyeballs look really cool when you draw a really great one. There's a lot of detail. There's kind of the sheen of um, kind of the reflecting light. They look incredible and there's a lot of detail involved, but we have just seen too many at this point. <laughs> too many eyeballs. All yes. right, I'll, I'll bear that in mind. <laughs> uh, that's really interesting. Um, and another question that I wanted to ask about uh, you had on the slide is um, yes. you said something that was important to communicate were uh, values. And I was wondering, mm. what, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Um, so making sure that the um, the colors themselves really is kind of committing in a way to that color. So um, having it, if it's a dark blue, making sure that it's really dark blue and even contrasting that against maybe lighter colors as well and showcasing that full range. Um, when you have an image that's right in the middle there, so it's kind of pastel, unless you are meaning for it to be pastel-y, um, making sure that it's really committing to those strong uh, strong color schemes there. Okay, great. Um, thanks. And so, yeah, so a, a couple more questions um, that I'd, uh, I'd like to, to address is, um, so thanks, I think the information on the portfolios uh, were really invaluable. Um, but great. maybe kind of coming back to, uh, to SCAD uh, itself. So the portfolio is for scholarship consideration from students, but it's not. So maybe could you talk a little bit about the admission uh, process for students? Absolutely, yes. So SCAD's admission process is um, a little bit on the unique side, and I would say in general for university, we're very hands-on and quite supportive in this process. So you can begin your application online on our website. It's about a 10-minute background information form. Uh, you pay the application fee, hit submit, and you're officially in our system as an applicant. So no materials are needed at that time. Once we have you in our system, you are paired with a personal advisor. Um, I advise many students throughout this process and basically we will help you along the way. Any questions that you may have, if you wanna have a Zoom conversation, we're happy to do that. And you can also submit your materials to us. So those materials, we're going to be looking at your transcripts. Um, so for the UK system, that's your GCSE scores as well as your predicted A-levels. Um, if you're on the IB system, then we're looking at your past three years worth of IB grades. Um, and then you also have the opportunity to submit a statement of purpose, which is basically a personal statement. And then uh, letters of recommendation are always really, really helpful. They give us a lot of context um, and kind of background into who you are and what you will be bringing to our university. And then we move on to um, the portfolio scholarship. So you can actually go through the admission process and wait to see if you are admitted before you submit your portfolio. I know that can be quite helpful when you're doing final projects. If you would like to wait, you can absolutely do that. Um, and one of the reasons we do this system is because we have students coming to us from a wide variety of backgrounds. And some of them are really creative, innovative individuals, but they are not necessarily lucky enough to go to an institution that has fantastic facilities or even classes available for them to take. And that's not a reason why they should not be able to come to a place like SCAD. And in fact, it's our responsibility to be able to teach them the skills that they need to implement their ideas. So that's where this concept of having a portfolio for students who do have those skills for scholarship, so that way they are recognized, but it is not required as a part of that admission process. Okay, great, thanks. And then um, again, on the admission side, uh, how yes. many letters of recommendation are you looking for? Uh, so we would recommend two letters and that can be from anyone. So if it's a art teacher, that's great. That's always helpful, um, you know, art or design. Um, but if you want to do a counselor or another teacher that just really knows you well, we're looking at someone who can speak to your character, your work ethic, um, your creativity. Those are all fantastic uh, uh, concepts to include in that letter. Great. And then touching on the personal statement. So yes. is this going to kind of, you know, is this something where students are taking their common app personal statement and, you know, adapting it, or is it something completely different? 
No, absolutely. You can use that common app um, and then just kind of pivot it into YSCAD specifically. Um, it's really great for us to get to know you a little bit. Who are you outside of those grades? Why would you like to go to a creative institution? What do you want to do? Um, I would say that we're quite flexible in how you present yourself. And part of that stems from we're a creative university. So how do you want to present yourself? What do you want to say? But again, just know that we are seeing thousands of these. And if you can present yourself in a unique way, that is always, always to your benefit. Okay. And is there, um, is there a bit of a, a kind of a, a fit for SCAD? Like what kind of students mm. are, are you looking for? Are they all, I mean, you know, I know it's creative, but mm. could you elaborate a bit more? Absolutely. I think a key element of a SCAD student is being an innovative thinker and someone who is really a go-getter. We provide our students with so many opportunities and um, just really great experiences for them to have connections with the professional world as students, but they have to still accept those opportunities um, and make sure that they're going to events that we host and that they're working with their advisors, whether that's your student success advisor, faculty advisor, or your career advisor, going to the career fair. Um, so we really, we really want a student body that's, that's filled with students who are thinking differently, wanting to put something out there in the world, create something, but also are really willing to work for that. Great. So, so there is, so the element of that demonstrated interest is, is exactly to, for students as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, I was wondering as well, so you discussed scholarships and I guess, you know, being based in the UK here, but for, for everyone watching, are those scholarships available to international students? Yes, absolutely. All applicants are eligible for scholarship consideration. And I should note that we have an academic scholarship as well that students are automatically evaluated for. And that's going to be based on the IB scores, A levels, any school system that you're a part of. So if you are scoring well right now, good job, keep it up. Um, that's great for both admission as well as that scholarship. And then we move on to portfolio and you submit the portfolio alongside your resume. The resume really being a great opportunity to brag about yourself. Um, I know sometimes, especially in the artistic field, students are a little bit shy and a little bit, um, there's that self-critic. And we say, push beyond that. Anything that might be interesting, go ahead and put that on that resume. It's a great place for you to celebrate all the work that you've been doing so far. Great. And I guess the resume, I mean, aside from the personal statement, is also a really good place to kind of exactly. showcase some of the values you're, and, uh, and uh, personality, character. Um, yes qualities that you were mentioning okay great um so let me see uh, and one more thing is it an advantage to get the application in early um, i would say it is for yourself in that it gives you plenty of time to know if you're admitted or not which is valuable information to have um, it gives you plenty of time to work on those portfolios for scholarship consideration and also have other financial conversations with us. We do have some smaller scholarships that we can help you with. Um, and then eventually receiving that visa. All of that takes time. So beginning early is really helpful. That being said, we do operate on rolling admission. So what that means is that we accept applications year round and there's no specific deadline. So you do have flexibility with that timeline. Great, thanks. Um, so I think we can get to some of these because I've got a million questions, but let's get to, to, to our audience here. So we've Great. got uh, a question in the Q&A here uh, from okay. Lucy and she's asking, um, with the portfolio, are you allowed to submit more cartoony drawings or is it recommended you draw realism? So at SCAD, we truly, truly don't have a preference. Showcase what is best for you right now. So if that's cartoony in style, that's great. We want to see that. Um, there certainly is not more value in being realistic versus the cartoon style. Um, I will say that's different though per institution. So do make sure, as I said before, that you understand those expectations. Great. Um, and, and kind of following on from that. So in the portfolio, I mean, you know, aside from kind of, you know, quality of, of, uh, of the images and, you know, mm. creativity and stuff. Yes. I mean, are you looking for specific qualities within the portfolio? Or are you looking for, you know, storytelling or, because I mean, I'm assuming <coughs> some skills can be 
and technique can be taught so is there but are there like that specific kind of rough talent you're looking for that's a great question so we are looking at your skill set and we're looking at your creativity now i know that's very broad but ideally you would be submitting work that showcases both together and that's fantastic in cases though where um maybe you have a piece that's really not as creative because you were focusing on a certain skill that's fine, go ahead and, and submit that, but balance it out with something that showcases who you are as a creative thinker. If it only is a portfolio that really shows your skill, that that's okay, but you will push it to the next level by actually showing who you are and what your ideas are. Um, we've certainly had pieces in the past submitted that could be submitted to a children's book. You can see like oh my goodness you know what's going on with the main character there what is this person thinking or what a unique concept to have these otters dressed up in sweaters i saw that one time and i was just like wow that's a very striking image um so it certainly stands out that much more when you're inserting yourself into your work and um that being said i think when the piece is a little bit personal to you oftentimes that's some of your stronger work so go ahead and submit that Hmm, that's interesting. And uh, I, I think there's something to be said there as well, right, to kind of mm -hmm. to start a story and then and, and, and get people to kind of want more and to see exactly. to see what happens with the otters and their sweaters. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to know, by the way, so you yeah. right? Say, have you heard? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, and we have another question here. So, not specifically about SCAD, um, but do you have an outlook into whether submitting a portfolio alongside your usual college essays and applications, where some I know some colleges do accept them, is it worth it? Is it a good addition to the profile? And does it add any value to an application that isn't artistic, maybe? Absolutely, definitely. Um, any element of an application that you can add that's going to introduce yourself that much more to an admission committee is going to be valuable. I would say if there is a true reason, if you're thinking, you know, this portfolio really is not at the level that you need it to be, maybe, maybe excluded, but that's a huge caveat there. Um, students are often kind of making that evaluation on their own. Am I good enough or not? And that's tricky. And uh, you have to remember that we understand you're still at the high school level. We might see images that are outstanding, but we also see images that are not, and that's okay. So I would go ahead and submit it. I really do think that nine out of 10 times that is going to be helpful. I guess it contributes a little bit to that kind of well-rounded exactly. uh, aspect of, of US college admissions. Absolutely. Okay, great. I uh, if I can uh, in, impinge on your time a little bit more, I've got a few more uh, character, uh, character, I was looking at the word character, a few more questions. Um, and so uh, you talked about so many of the programs available mm -hmm. at SCAD and yes. you know the different types of portfolio uh, that you can uh, submit. And I was wondering, should someone, you know, you kind of mentioned uh, film and acting and you mm -hmm. know, performance. So is it a good idea to submit a portfolio that's geared directly towards that program? Is it okay to kind of have a bit of mixed media or? Um, so it really, really does not have to be related to what you're going to study. Um, in fact, every single student is going to be accepted officially as undeclared in their major. And that very first year, you're taking foundational classes, general education classes, and intro level classes. So you have plenty of time to fully decide what you're going to study at SCAD. And then you um, select that major officially your second year. So the portfolio really should showcase your best work right now. And it does not matter what it is in, um, in relation to what you actually would like to study with us. Again, remember that we're looking at your creative mindset. Um, that's kind of more important to us than whether you're already a filmmaker because you're coming to SCAD to learn how to be a filmmaker. True, great. Um, and another thing, so is there any kind of particular time period that the portfolio should cover? I mean, should, you know, if, if students have something that they produced a really long time ago is, you know, but then they're able to show maybe some progression in their work. Is there any interest in having that there or should it be from their high school careers or? Yeah, I would say stick with um, work that's been produced relatively recently. 
Uh, well, it's sometimes it can be really great on a personal level to see how much you've grown. We want to see the the work that's great. Um, so yes, I would definitely keep it if you can keep it within about three years. That's pretty much the limit that I would recommend setting. Any more than that, you as a person have changed in that amount of time, especially in high school. That's a long time. So um, I would always recommend doing more recent pieces. Okay. Great. Um, and I'd like to come back uh, again, just briefly to the personal statement um, and the CV. So is, um, and, and again, I guess we'll go specific to SCAD here. So um, you ha SCAD has its own application portal, as you mentioned, but it's mm -hmm. also on the Common App, I believe. Yes, correct. So, so, I mean, is there, you know, the same kind of consideration for extracurricular activities, for example, or I guess if you're applying via the SCAD, uh, portal, then it will that would be on the CV, or I wonder if you mm -hmm. maybe demystify the differences. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're submitting via the Common App, um, we are going to look at all the materials that you submit via there. Um, and then if you're on our website, yes, just as you mentioned, the CV is where we're going to be seeing that extracurricular work, um, and that's where we really want to see any collaborative projects that you've been on, leadership activities, clubs, sports. Um, even sometimes we've had students explain how they've been selected to, you know, paint a mural for their cafeteria and um, include that information. That's that's your time to kind of really showcase yourself outside of the classroom. And in the Common App, this, the same thing, we're going to be looking at that. Okay, great. Um, and then maybe uh, uh, if, if uh, any of the attendees have any more questions, please do post them in our, in our Q&A uh, or in the chat. And then I, I have another one. It's a bit of a technical question. It's about slide room. <laughs> oh, okay. So I do know that that seems to be the kind of the preferred platform for yes. students to kind of uh, to submit mm -hmm. um, their portfolios. And I guess I, I believe that it's accepted by various universities as well. So is that a little bit kind of common? Students build a portfolio and then it goes everywhere. Can they tailor it to the universities? Do you know? So usually the way it works is you will actually create a, um, a login and it will be the slide room for that specific university. So for us, if you truly just Google a SCAD slide room, it will take you to SCAD's page in slide room and you'll see the different uh, portfolios that you can submit. So that's undergraduate as well as graduate transfer credit. Any students right now that are in high school, you'd be doing undergraduate portfolio and then you submit your images there. Um, do keep in mind that they do need to be uploaded directly to slide rooms. So especially for films, sometimes we'll receive links to like a YouTube. Unfortunately, that will not work. It really needs to be the actual film uploaded to the platform itself. That's the same thing with images. If you have your own website, put that website in your resume, but don't do that with the portfolio. Okay, so slide room does allow students to have their own account and then they can personalize it. Absolutely. Or yes. tailor it maybe is a better word for each of the colleges. Yes. It's not like they have one like Instagram no. page and then it's the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be a bit tricky. <laughs> yeah, the same for everyone. All right. Uh, we have a, another uh, question here. Um, so if a student has two types of media in which they work, so for example, sculpture and photography, um, should they make two portfolios or a single one that shows both? That's a great question. So every student needs to submit just one portfolio. In this example, both of those mediums fall under visual arts. So you can submit both of those um, examples into your visual arts portfolio, and that's fantastic. Um, that's, that's great that you're doing those. Um, if you are wanting to do, say, performing arts with film though, those are two different portfolios. So you do really need to select one. If you're having a hard time deciding, feel free to reach out to your advisor. We are more than happy to speak to you about that, um, to even view your work ahead of time and just uh, kind of point you in the right direction and see if you're on track. So that's something that um, is just great to keep in mind throughout this process. Great, thanks. Um, so if there are any other final questions up from the audience, we'll get to those. Um, but one thing that I thought that might be worth mentioning that you uh, mentioned uh, to uh, Jason and me earlier is maybe you would like to describe your background, your Zoom background to our, oh, yes. I think it's worth it. 
Of course, absolutely. Um, so this is in Savannah, Georgia. It is in our admission building. Um, so one of the areas that we start our tours in, um, it's a really great introduction into SCAD. SCAD is a place where the second you walk into a building, you know, oh, this is SCAD. It doesn't matter if it's in Savannah, Atlanta, or in France. It's a very artistic place, very creative. Um, any of the work or design that you're seeing up on the walls, um, that's all going to be faculty, uh, students, or alumni work. So it's very much showcasing SCAD's kind of community and their work. And it's just a very fun environment. I think it kind of reflects the atmosphere of our student body. Oh, that sounds really great. Um, and then maybe one final question, unless we get any others popping up in the Q&A um, that I would really like to ask, because you mentioned earlier that, um, you know, that SCAD was quite experiential and that students really mm. had like a, you know, career driven and stuff. Could you yes. talk a little bit maybe about some of the things that, you know, are on offer to students once they get, you mm. know, to SCAD, to, to college in general? I know it's a question, you know, if I study this, what can I do afterwards? Absolutely, yes. So that is a huge question, both from students as well as their parents. Um, and there are so many different opportunities for you to prepare for that outside world once you graduate. Um, one of our major programs is called SCAD Pro. And that is where major Fortune 500 companies, they come to us with their design projects. And then we assemble a group of students across all different disciplines. And for one of their classes, they actually create that project. So oftentimes that is a product that goes directly off into market. And so you're able to have that on your resume. Um, in recent years, we've worked with Uber on a flying car project, um, Delta Airlines, we did their uniforms. Uh, for the FIFA 2022 World Cup, we're doing the graphics for them. Uh, Mercedes-Benz, the interior of their stadium in Atlanta has SCAD work in it. Um, so those are all student projects. They're able to work with major companies, create those relationships, network yourself. Um, oftentimes students have been offered internships afterwards or even job offers. Um, and then even if you're not working for that company, like I said, you're graduating with that degree, but then you also have on your resume that you have that experience of being in that real world environment. Um, we have a quarter system. So that is every single 10 weeks, you are changing quarters. That's quite quick. We do that for a reason. We want to mimic the industry expectations. The reality is that you're going to have pretty major projects that you have to do and turn around very quickly. So time management is a huge skill that we make sure that our students are developing. Um, and then we also have signature events. And those are events across all different campuses for various disciplines where we bring in industry professionals. So an example of one of those is our SCAD Film Festival. It is a major film festival offered in Savannah. Um, really, really incredible. You are able to have producers as well as actors, sound designers all coming to SCAD to not only showcase their work, but to also give workshops and speak with the students one-on-one. -on -one. So you're able to have that um, experience of really speaking to someone who has been in the industry, what's that like? What can you be doing as a student? Um, and kind of really learning from the best of the best. That sounds amazing. That sounds really, really great. All right. Well, our, our I think we've uh, we've been so thorough that uh, you know there, there are just no questions left. So I will just say thank you so much, Olivia, for joining us this afternoon. It's been incredibly informative and making me wish that I was 17 all over again so I could, <laughs> <laughs> so I could come to SCAD. Well, thank um, you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been great. Yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic. So thanks to our audience for uh, for joining us this afternoon. Uh, thanks to Jason for uh, organizing the webinar. and. Uh, yeah, if, uh, oh, Olivia, maybe would you be happy for people to kind of contact you? Um, Absolutely, definitely. Maybe... I'll put my email in the chat. Brilliant. And I'm also on WhatsApp and more than happy to chat via that as well. That's very generous. There you go. You. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Have, uh... everyone. Yeah, I hope everyone uh, found that as good as I did. So thanks very much and have a good afternoon. Thank you.